Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing about using the option G53 inside of Pumatix in its coordinate system. Now, I plan on doing many more videos dealing with the coordinate system in Pumatix. I'm getting a lot of questions on it. And again, I also want to cover using the online intuitive user's manual because I don't feel a lot of people understand just how powerful the user's manual is with Pumotics in the simplistic form of point and click and really define what you're looking for. So first what we're going to do is double click on Pumotics, the icon on your desktop. And just as it asks us what screen set we'd like to use, I'm going to go with the six axis and today I think I'll go with the dark screen set. I'll click OK. Okay, you can see we've got our Indian motorcycle job on the table right here. And again, what we are going to do is we are going to come up here to help and we're going to go to the user's manual option. Now, I'm like you, many of you know that um, user's manual in most software, some of people use it, some people don't. I'm not really that good with using it, but I will say that using it inside of Pumotics is really cool due to the fact that it is intuitive. I'm going to cover that real brief. Um, but overall, the thing to keep in mind is every update that we do with Pumotics, the online user's manual will reflect all of those updates in new, new defining terms, which many of you will look for. You can see over here on the left side under user's manual, it says actual version 3.5.0, and then it says version 3.5.021337. Naturally, it's updating with the actual software. So what I want you guys to pay attention to, I think a lot of people get lost in the menu options over here. Let's come over here to the search menu and click in G53. And you can see here 19 search results. And you can see everything that's come in, and we got a lot, some in Russian, some in English. We're going to go with the first one, which is G53, moving and machine coordinates. Now, once we clicked on that, you can see we get the definition. And it says created by the writer, last modified, September 12, 2019. Uh, G53 axis to move in machine coordinates. Specify the G53 command on the line containing the linear movement. Excuse me, G53 is not a model command and should be indicated on each line. G0 and G1 need not be indicated on the line where G53 is present. For example, the command G53, G0, X0, Y0, Z0 will move to the home position even if the current coordinate system has offsets for the working zero. So, Many of you now know and can play with, and I'm going to show you how to teach yourself all of these different commands by yourself without putting your machine at risk. That's the number one thing. But I want to show you just how easy it is to define what we're actually learning and test what this actually means. So G53 axis we now have explained. You can see there's not much we can click here. We do have examples over here, um, but nothing to click on. But you notice the G0 and G1 we can click on. G0 here and G1 we can click on. So if we click on that, we're now going to get the definition of each of these so that we now know exactly what we're looking at. G0 axis. For fast linear interpolation, specify G0 axis. Uh, where either axis is optional, specifying G0 is optional if the current travel mode is G0. This command linearly moves to the destination with a maximum speed or less if it, it is assumed that the cutting will not occur when the G0 command is executed. So basically, it's an acceleration factor. Okay, if we type in G0, we can test this. If we type it in with G53, wherever your coordinates are going to move to, in theory, we should be able to see an acceleration factor of the rapid motion going to that coordinate position. Well, if we know that's what G0 does, then in theory, most likely G1 will do something slightly different in terms of the feed rate speed. So we clicked on it. Now we're waiting for linear interpolation at a given feed rate. So now you're at a given feed rate, specify G1 axis. We're specifying any axis is optional. G1 is optional if the current mode of movement is G1. You notice that the definitions, they kind of read in more or less like a, I get told they're kind of like a riddle. They're really not a riddle, and I'm going to show you how we can test this. This command linearly moves to the destination with the current feed, feed rate. And again, we're defining it right here. And now how do we do this? Well, Right now, we've got basically examples, G1 example, G90 set absolute positioning mode, and the guys get hung up on this area. But what I want to show you is let's see if we can teach ourselves what this actually does in real time in the software. So we've already got the software open. We're going to come back to our software. 
And you can see right here, I've got G53, G0, X8, Y8, which are the coordinates. Again, 8 in a positive direction on X, 8 in a positive direction on Y. We've got the G53 G code that I've actually inserted in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just how easy it is to edit your G code. You can see here, uh, again, I've just scrolled all the way up to the top using this button right here. And then I'm going to double click using the left mouse key to actually uh, highlight any motorcycles. Now we know we're at block one of 6379. And I'm now going to click on the edit tab. And it brings up notepad so I can edit my G code. So if you wanted to insert a G53 command, you could do this at will. Now, it was brought to my attention that there are CAM software naturally that you're going to have to do this in certain applications where you'd want to put a specific coordinate position in if you run out of, say, your offsets or if there's a specific application that would require this, you could come in here and specify an exact location and allocate that individually based on the program required to actually put in a command that would actually deviate from the normal G code produced by your CAM software. Not all CAM software is created equal. Some will require you to put in additional programming. Some may not be compatible with certain post processors for your actual motion control software. This is all standard practice. And again, uh, there are workarounds in future releases. We plan on having all, you know, in a perfect world, we would have releases that would accommodate everything. But there are requirements for this. And learning this is really something everybody should know and have in their uh, resources, so to speak. So again, you can see here where we've got the G53 command. We have the G0 and then the X8 and Y8. So now we're all set here. We've edited it in. I'm going to click on Save by File. Now I'm just going to exit out. You can see we're at the back top. and We regenerated our G code automatically. And now what's going to happen is if I scroll down to that command right here, I'm going to highlight it again. I'm now going to cycle on the console. And I'm going to highlight this with the green LED. And I'm just going to click to run the single block. Now, this is what I mean by testing without you actually trying uh, to put your robot at risk. Let's say you don't have a clue as to what's going to happen. Okay, if we have soft limits working already and we, we can at least identify which direction we're going in. And again, I'm going in the positive direction on both Y and the positive direction on both X. I'm right now in simulator mode, which means my PLCM controller, whether, uh, again, whichever controller you're using is not actually plugged in, but I can still simulate motion or what would happen with the software just to test a feature set and see what I just programmed. So once again, I've selected a single block and I'm just going to click over here where it says execute selected G code line. I'm going to click on it. Now, as I click on it, you see it says unknown G code used. And now she's coming up, and there you go. And now she moved eight inches. So it followed that exact, and you notice it stopped after that single line of G code. And now we moved eight inches. And you can see on our X and Y, we moved eight inches. Okay? Now, of course, following that, it would just go on with machining to the next allocated G code line after that. Okay? But let's think about what just occurred. Okay, let's define it. Let's come back to that G code line. Okay, and we'll go back to zero so we can come back to where we are. Now, as you see the rapid motion coming back to zero, you see how fast it is. And I want to draw your attention to that because you remember G0 and G1 allocates the, the feed rate at which it's going to travel to the coordinate position we just programmed in. In which case on this, it's X8 in the positive and Y8 in the positive. So I'm going to run this again, and you'll pay attention to the feed rate at which speed it actually jogs over to this coordinate position. I'm going to click on single block. And let's watch here and see exactly how fast we're traveling. Rapid rate at 142. It's moving pretty quick. And you see that right there. Boom. We're set, right? So we've just defined we've basically moved pretty quick to that location by programming in a manual code of G53. We used uh, the other code of G0. And then we put our coordinate locations of X8 and Y8. Of course, you could add a Z location if you chose to. It's arbitrary um, based on your application. And now what we're going to do is go back to zero. And the reason we're going to go back to zero is now we're going to adjust because we've just defined it ourselves. We've seen the defining term of what this programming actually did meaning we've tested it. We know now what this does. 
Now what we're going to do is go in here and edit this again. I'm going to turn off the console. I'm going to click on edit. We'll bring our code back up. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change from G0 to G1. Now we can see and define what's going to happen to the feed rate motion in real time in simulator mode where our robot is safe to see exactly what occurs by doing so. So we're going to come over here to file. We're going to go save and done. Now we regenerate a G code. We're going to scroll back down. Again, a no G code used. That's fine. This is just arbitrary, guys. I'm just putting this in as an example. It is certainly not something you would do on a normal basis. But once again, if you do require to do it and use this coordinate, you can add this anywhere you like manually. So you can see, once again, we've added it in the same position. The only thing we've done is change over and add the G1 instead of G0. So we've got G53, G1, X location 8 positive, Y location 8 positive, and now we're back at 0. We're going to turn our console on, and let's see what occurs now when we've put that G1 in there. Once again, we're in simulator mode, so if you were running this with me, and I hope many of you do, I hope you take these examples, and if you really want to learn the software, go in tune with me with your robot. If you have access to another screen on your, on your uh, system, your computer, that's the best way to go. You can watch the video on one and then actually see and learn on the other. That's the fastest way to learn by far. The other way to learn, of course, is not just listening and watching, but also writing down and taking notes. So again, I cannot stress that enough. Everyone should be taking notes. Now what we're going to do, we're setting up and clicking on the block we want to run. We're going to click on single block once again. And you can see, now let's pay attention to the feed rate. Now you notice it's moving slower. We're moving at 71. Commanded inch, and right now we're moving at a much slower feed rate than what we originally moved when we used G0. So we know here the feed rate is going to be based on the commanded inch a minute, not the rapid rate over here, which we were seeing before by using, uh, again, G0. And I wanted you guys to pay attention to that because now you've truly defined what these operations actually do in real time. And this is what will make you more and more equipped at using the software. And again, these are things you can practice yourself. I just practice it um, using the simulator mode. And I hope many of you will do it as you're learning the coordinate positioning system. Now, again, you can see we still move the same distance on the X and the Y. We're going to go back to zero. You can see the rapid rate here is displayed, but when we come over here and we do that line of code again, where our feed rate is going to be under the commanded inch per minute feed rate instead of the rapid rate. And I want to, once again, pay close attention to that. We just select the box. I'm going to come over here and say single block. And you're going to see it once again. Rapid rate is zeroed, yet your feed rate is the commanded feed rate, and your motion over here to that coordinate position is much slower. So again, we learned some. And that's what I cannot emphasize enough. You guys can train yourselves on learning this. There is many options inside of Pumotics with the coordinate positioning system. And I highly recommend you do just what I just did. This is the fastest way to teach yourself because not only did we see theory by reading it in the user's manual, we just put that theory to use. And anybody can do this. And again, I'm trying to do it in a way that I feel is intuitive to where you're able to do it just by editing the code manually. You can edit into any code just to see what it does. And then applying it is no different than going in and programming in what line you would like these settings at. Okay. So again, we go to zero. And you're all set. So you could practice this as, you know, whichever way you want. Now, if you were to come all the way up, just to show you what will happen, if you're at the beginning line of G code, and we start where we're going to machine from, and then we let the actual code translate to going all the way down to that line, you'll see exactly what would happen if you program this in all the way through your codes. So let's just watch that real quick, and it'll go through. And we'll select this. Simulator is selected as the active motion control. Now, many of you will get this if you're in simulator mode. Again, that's the best part about simulator mode is you can't hurt anything. Any manipulation in this mode will not affect the machine state. Continue, yes. Now we can see exactly what's going on. And she's going to come over, and she's right to that line, and boom, we jog all the way over. And once again, we are using our, our feed rate, which is programmed in at 71 inches. Okay? And now it's going right to the next line of code because we did not choose to run a single line of code. And now she'll continue machining as she should. 
So again, very, very intuitive, very simple to do. And you just tested basically a setting that we wanted to try. And I get that a lot. You know, how do I test something? I really don't want to, you know, have any problems with the machine. I want to put my machine at risk. This is how we teach ourselves. And again, it's going to be persistence on your part. And again, staying with a, uh, a consistency of this process. That's the exact way I would do it. I would come over and really just focus on learning one bit and piece of the puzzle at a time. Because again, list of G codes supported by the system, you can go in here and you can see all of the different G codes if you want to. But this video I want to keep short or as shorter as possible. And once again, we've just defined how to use G53, use G0 option, and also use the G1 option. And again, if we don't care about additional speeds using G0 or G1, you could just put in G53 without G0 or G1. It's not mandatory. Okay? So again, we've put them in as far as options to adjust speed rate speeds to that location, but it is not mandatory. And just to prove that, I'm going to come over here again, and we'll go with Edit File. And now we'll come over here, and we'll just take out the G1 completely, and G53, X8, Y8 positive, and we'll see what happens. We'll come over here to File, Save, Exit Out. Once again, G-code reloads itself, and we'll come down here, just go right down, come up to that line, and go to start. Boom. You'll see that once we removed those actual abbreviations, we went right over, once again, to rapid rate override, and that's exactly where we're at. So seeing that, you guys can see exactly what we've determined to be adjustable. You've adjusted your feed rate, and you now have the option to either use the G1, G0 option to adjust the speed and feed rate going to the articulated position you program, or you can take it out. And if you take it out, it's just like putting in uh, G0, which will once again go as fast as possible. So these are things to just keep in mind, but again, you've seen it in real time now of just how fast it really is. I mean, it's, it's really that simple to just test things and see for yourself safely. Once again, you can do this at home uh, when you've, you've come home and you've got your laptop or, again, if you're in front of your computer, you can test these theories over and over again just to get the defining factor of what we're looking at. So again, click on the line, go to single block, come over, and now she travels. And once again, you can see rapid rate override. We're right here in rapid rate. Boom, and it stopped. Okay, once again, went to our articulated position, 8 inch, 8 inch, and we go to zero. And there you go. So again, guys, I know that there's going to be a lot more questions. The more videos I do, this is totally normal. I know, the, I know there's a lot to learn. Again, you know, learning any coordinate positioning system and learning software is, to, is really going to be the heart of, you know, keeping your system as efficient as possible, your robot. It's going to take time. You want to eat one bite of the elephant at a time for that reason. But again, I'm always here. If you have questions, uh, have comments, quotes, whatever it may be, uh, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. Uh, again, that's my direct email for anything regarding consultations, quotes, or once again, questions. You'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. I thank you all for your support. Take care.